Good morning and welcome to Scabber Backpacking. I'm Mark and today I've got another gear review for you and it's another one that comes from the state of South Carolina. Uh, it happens to be the same manufacturer that made the Element wood stove that I just reviewed a few days ago and that is Tato Gear. Now today I have another stove that they have created. This is the AB13 Max Hybrid. Still got it in the package here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and show you what we've got inside. Okay, so here are the components that come inside of the package. We have a cap that goes onto the fuel bottle. So first of all, you've got a fuel bottle with a little flip up pour spout. Then it's got the cap for the fuel bottle with a silicone, one of those high temp silicone fuel lines. Then you have this puck, this little disc here, which is actually the burner of the stove and it has integrated pot stand, so you can go ahead and open those up. Uh, it's got carbon felt wound into the center, and then along the outside, there are 15 little holes that have been drilled. Uh, so I suspect what's gonna happen is I light this, it heats it up, and then the jets fire up, just like a, uh, a little pressurized stove. One of the things that's really cool that I, I think is, is unique to this stove, I haven't seen on any other uh, remote feed stove, is that the nipple is recessed. So there's no way you're gonna catch it on anything. You're, there's no way you're gonna break it off, which is something that you do have to worry about when you're out backpacking and you've got things that stick out. So you take the fuel line and you slide it over that recessed nipple. Now it's not the easiest thing to do, but none of them, none of them are all that easy to get on. I mean, if you've watched my Mini Bowl Designs review that choke hazard. Getting the uh, the high temp silicone line inside of the, the two pieces of the choke hazard is pretty tough. This wasn't too bad. I got it on there. Uh, it's on there enough that I'm able to pull pretty good and it's not coming off. So next thing to do is to replace the cap with this one. So now we have a system uh, remote feed stove with the fuel over here. So I figured while testing this I could make myself some coffee. You guys know me. I like some coffee. So I've got my Angry Troll Pot and it will sit pretty low down down on here. Uh, so I'm interested to see how this will work. Now a wider stance pot is going to fit on top of here and so it'll be raised up a little bit higher. This one's going to sit down pretty well uh, which is going to do two things. Number one, the flame's not going to be as big as it hits the, the bottom of the pot, uh, but it may be reflecting enough heat down that it fires up the jets a little bit quicker. So that's something to look out for, for us to, to check and see. Uh, so the way we get this started is we flip the reservoir over, and you can already hear it, it going, uh, but just give it a little squeeze. And what you're looking for is this carbon felt here. You're looking for it to become saturated. I don't have this on there. Well, actually that's on there pretty tight, but I did have a little bit of, uh, when I put too much pressure on there, I did have a little bit of spilling coming out of this cap. So that's something I'm gonna check uh, after I squeeze this in here. I'll check the, the fit on there and see if maybe that was something I did or if maybe there's a little bit of a, uh, a fit problem there. I'm squeezing it in. There you can see it just dripped a, again over here. I've got quite a bit of fuel that I've been putting in here. Starting to see a little bit of uh, saturation there, but not, not complete saturation yet. You guys can probably see what I'm talking about. If I bring this over here, like this down, let's take a look. So there you can start to see the saturation here along the side. You can see it a little bit in the middle. But to get a full saturation, I'm gonna keep squeezing out of there. Now you can now you can see it. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back over. Okay, so I went ahead and I reattached the top. Uh, I took it completely off, took a look at it, and reattached it. And now I'm squeezing it pretty good. Uh, you can see it the fuel's coming all the way up out and there's no fuel leaking out of here so I'm gonna go ahead and say that was user error on my part 
that this thing doesn't leak, that it was just the way that I had it on there. Maybe I didn't have it screwed on quite, quite right. So that's how you light it. Uh, right now, you probably can't see it. I can't see it, but I can see the way that the heat is coming up the sides. Um, you know, it's evaporating a little bit of the fuel that's along the edge here. Uh, I can feel it. I can see the heat reflecting off of here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and just kind of let it go, get some coffee going. Um, I will do another test of this inside where it's a little bit darker, controlled environment so you guys can see flame pattern and the jets firing up. So one of the things I want to check while I've got it going is will it boil, I don't know, I probably have close to 10 ounces of water in here. Will it boil a cup to a little over a cup on one fill of the reservoir? So what I've done is I filled it, you guys saw I filled it till uh, you saw the saturation and actually there was a little bit of fuel coming out of all the little jet holes. Um, but I'm not, you can see that I've got this, the reservoir flipped back over so nothing's feeding in. You know, you could set this thing up a little bit higher where it's going to feed down and keep feeding it like I do with the choke hazard. Um, but with this one, I wanted to see, it's got a pretty good size reservoir right there. Uh, I'll have to check and see if I can find out what size it is. Is it an ounce? Is it a half ounce? Uh, just to determine, will it bring this to a boil without having to refuel it? Uh, but being that it is a remote feed stove, you do have that option of continually adding fuel as the flames go down. So that's a, that's a nifty little option you got there. So I was able to answer the first question that I wanted to know, and that's, would it boil that amount of water without having to refuel? And the, question, the answer to that one, on this occasion, in these settings, with the wind being what it is out here today, is a no. Uh, it was just about to go out. The flame was just about to go out. There wasn't a lot of heat coming off of it, so I had to give it a little bit more. Uh, I've given it a little bit more. We're getting closer, but was, we're still not there, so I'm going to go ahead. And this is how easy it is to refuel it. And just add more, turn it over, let the line drain out. And now, immediately, the heat picked right back up. Now, with the wind blowing out here, it could have a couple of effects. Possibly it's keeping the the side jets from firing up. Um, this is a completely unscientific test this morning. I need to get some coffee in me, then we'll go inside and do a, a little bit more uh, organized test of this. But just uh, just wanted to show you guys what I was what I was doing out here. Okay, so I've got my coffee now. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this, and then we'll go inside and uh, do some more testing with this and see how it how it works out. Coffee. Always good. Alright, to determine how much fuel this holds, I'm measuring it out in the little measuring cups that I use and pouring it in. So that's half an ounce, 15 milliliters. I'm going to do up another 15 milliliters. Let's see if it will accept a full another 15. Okay, so it looks pretty saturated. I did spill a little bit there. You can see it on the uh, paper towel. But it looks like it'll hold about an ounce because it is pretty saturated right there. Okay, so for this test, I've got the batch stove's 10 cm pot with two cups of cold water in it. I put the one ounce in the reservoir here, and then we've got probably a half to an ounce uh, left in the bottle here that we can keep it going with. So I'm going to go ahead and light it. And now in here you can actually see the flame. Uh, the 10 cm pot is wide enough that it sits on top of the built-in pot stands. There we go, center it a little bit. And now we will watch this and see how long it takes before the jets fire up. One of the things I have noticed, and I'll have to take a look at this after this is done burning, so I'm not going to touch it while it's hot, but if you look at the support arms, this side is lower than the other two, which is causing my pot to lean, which is why I thought it wasn't centered at first. Uh, so I will check and see if it's something I've done with the adjustment there, um, or if that is, in fact, how this one was made. So something to 
to look at. Looks like the the jets are going. It's very hard to tell. Uh, the only way I can really notice, and it may be really hard in here. Let me kill one more set of lights. So right there, you can kind of see that it is coming out of the jets. Uh, like I said, it's very hard to see in here, but the flame pattern is wider now, so I believe that it is. It's getting really close. So one of the things I wanted to test and see was if I filled that reservoir with one ounce, was one ounce enough to bring two cold cups of water to a boil? And the flames are still going really nicely down here, and we have birdie ball. Mm, yep. Yeah, we got that birdie ball going on. So yeah, it will do that. So that's something that I wanted to make sure it would do, and it does. Uh, I still need to check out the pot stand down here and see what's going on with that, but that's going to wait until... She cools off a little bit because I'm not putting my hand in there. It was about seven minutes for a boil, which isn't bad. Uh, two cups of water, seven minutes, one ounce of fuel. The fuel is yellow bottle heat. So pretty good, pretty good performance there. So it looks like the flames are starting to die down now. If you can see in there, the carbon felt, actually let me pull this off. Carbon felt is starting to glow. And that's how you can tell on all of these remote stoves that have the carbon wick, uh, that's how you can tell when it's starting to get low on fuel, is you'll see the, the glow, the ember there. And if you want to get rid of it, you simply add a little bit more fuel. You know, see I'm squeezing this, and it started to go away. And you can see some of the jets started to fire up again uh, on the side that the fuel is going into, but not on this far side. So it can show you can show that it... It takes a little bit to fuel the entire thing with that wick running throughout. Um, but that's how you can tell when it's starting to get low. All right, guys, so welcome back. Tato Gear AB13 Max Hybrid Stove. What do I think of it? I think it's a pretty good stove. I did notice a couple of little things I'm going to point out to you. Uh, but overall, I think it actually worked pretty well. It's an alcohol stove, and you guys know I like alcohol stoves. So let's take a look. You've got the package that you can put it in, and this is kind of like one of those frogs to frog togs type material. Uh, you know, it feels kind of papery, but but also kind of rugged. So inside, you've got the the puck, as I keep calling it, uh, the Tato Gear actual burner, and you can see that it's it's got the engraved model name, the name of the company. Shows that it's made in the USA, which is really cool. Made here in South Carolina, which is even cooler. It's got that recessed nipple that I talked about. And then it's got the pot stands. Now, let's talk about the pot stands real quick. So you've got two of them that, that are really, really loose that fold out. Now, this third one hits a little bit of a, a tough spot there. And you've got to kind of push it in order to get it past that tough spot. And now it's level. So I had mentioned that I thought that it wasn't sitting level. And I wasn't sure if it was made that way or what was going on. And so it's that this one here needs to be pushed. You could actually see a little bit of light coming underneath it. So it's all good. It just needed to be pushed a little bit. Uh, you've got your bottle and then the connector, your connector with the tube, the line there. All in all, nice light package. I'll go ahead and throw up the, the scale, showing you guys what it, what it weighs. I will keep using this one. I like it. You guys know I like alcohol stoves. Easy to use, work great. Um, this one with the combined felt and the, the jets, uh, you could definitely tell that the heat came up once the jets were firing. I'm not sure that the jets ever were firing while I was sitting out here trying to get the coffee going. So something to think about there. Uh, make sure that you're using a windscreen. I think that'll take care of it. Really trap that heat in there, get those jets firing and get your, your boil going a little faster. Good little stove. I'll take it out some more, but it's not going to be mine. This isn't going to stay with me. This is one of the, the pieces that I'm going to be giving away at my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're checking in uh, and doing what needs to be done to, to possibly win this, along with the other stove that I tested 
and all the other South Carolina gear that I've tested and am testing. So check that out. And maybe you will be the lucky winner. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you checking in, tuning in, seeing what I've got going on. Keep coming back. I'll keep putting up reviews. I've got some good trips coming up. I'm heading out with my son Justin and with Beekeeper and his son. We're going to go hit the Foothill Trail here in South Carolina. Uh, and that's coming up just in a couple of weeks. I think next weekend I will be out at the uh, Palmetto State Hangers Hang. So lots of good stuff coming up. Lots of good reviews coming up. Keep coming back. I'll keep doing this. You keep watching. Thanks, guys. I'll see you down the trail.